April 1840, Conference Minutes, at a general conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, held at the town of Nauvoo, Hancock County, Illinois, on the sixth day of April, A.D., 1840, agreeable to previous appointment. Joseph Smith, Jr. was called upon to preside over the conference, and Robert B. Thompson to be clerk. The meeting was then opened by an address to the throne of grace by Elder J. E. Page. The President rose and made some observations on the business of the conference, exhorted the brethren who had charges to bring against any individual to be charitable, and made some very appropriate remarks respecting pulling out the beam in their own eyes that they might see clearly the mote which was in their brother's eye. A letter was read from presidents of the seventies, wishing for an explanation of the steps which the High Council had taken in removing Elder F. G. Bishop from the Quorum of the seventies to that of the High Priest without any other ordination than he had when in the seventies, and wished to know whether those ordained into the seventies at the same time F. G. Bishop was, had a right to the High Priesthood or not. After observations on the case by different individuals, the President gave a statement of the authority of the Seventies, and stated that they were elders, and not high priests, and consequently Brother F. G. Bishop had no claim to that office. It was then unanimously resolved that Elder F. G. Bishop be placed back again into the Quorum of the Seventies. It was then resolved that the conference adjourn until 2 o'clock p.m. The conference met pursuant to adjournment. Prayer by Elder Joseph Young Elder J. Grover presented charges against Brother D. W. Rogers for compiling a hymn book and selling it as the one selected and published by Sister Emma Smith, for writing a letter to New York, having reflections in it on Elder John P. Green, and derogatory to his character, and likewise for administering medicine, which had a bad effect. It was resolved that as Brother Rogers is not present, the case be laid over until tomorrow. Elder John Lawson they came forward and stated that in consequence of some dif difficulty existing in the branch of the church where he resided respecting the word of wisdom, the church had withdrawn their fellowship from him, and Brother Thomas S. Edwards. After hearing the statements it was resolved that John Lawson and Thomas S. Edwards be restored to fellowship. Elder Orson Hyde addressed the conference, and stated that it had some years previous been prophesied of him that he had a great work to perform among the Jews and that he had recently been moved upon by the Spirit of the Lord to visit that people, and gather up all the information he could from them, respecting their movements, expectations, etc., and communicate the same to this church, and to this nation at large. Stated that he intended to visit the Jews in New York, London, Amsterdam, and then visit Constantinople and the Holy Land. It was then unanimously resolved that Elder Hyde proceed in his mission, and that his letter of recommendation be signed by the President and the Clerk of the Conference. Elder John E. Page then rose and spoke with much force on the object of Elder Hyde's mission, the gathering together of the Jews and the restoration of the House of Israel, provoking a short but convincing manner from the Bible, Book of Mormon, and the Book of Doctrine and Covenants, that these things must take place, and that the time had now nearly arrived for their accomplishment. It was then resolved that the conference adjourn until tomorrow at nine o'clock. Tuesday morning, conference met pursuant to adjournment. A hymn was sung by the choir, and the meeting was opened by prayer by Elder Caleb Baldwin. Brother D. W. Rogers' case was then called up, which after some observation and explanations of the different charges, it was unanimously resolved that Brother D. W. Rogers be forgiven, and that the hand of fellowship be continued. The meeting was then adjourned for one hour. Conference met pursuant to adjournment. A hymn was sung by the choir, and prayer was made by Elder R. Cahoon. The President called upon the clerk to read the report of the Presidency and High Council with regard to their proceedings in purchasing lands and securing a place of gathering for the Saints. The report having been read, the President made some observations respecting the pecuniary affairs of the Church, and requested the brethren to step forward and assist in liquidating the debts of, on the town plot so that the poor might have inheritances. He then gave some account of his mission to Washington City, in company with President Rigdon and Judge Higby, the treatment they received and the action of the Senate on the memorial which was presented to them. The meeting then called for the reading of the memorial and the report of the Committee on Judiciary to whom the same had been referred, which were read. 
It was then resolved that a committee of five be appointed to draft resolutions expressive of the sentiments of this conference in reference to the report. Resolved that Robert D. Foster, Orson Hyde, John E. Page, Joseph Wood, and Robert B. Thompson compose said committee and report to this conference. Resolved that this meeting adjourn until tomorrow at nine o'clock. A hymn was then sung and the meeting was dismissed by Elder John Smith. Wednesday morning, conference met pursuant to adjournment. A number were confirmed, who had been baptized the previous evening. The meeting was then opened with prayer by Elder Marks. The committee appointed to draft resolutions on the report which was read yesterday were then called upon to make their report. Robert B. Thompson of the committee then read the resolutions as follows. Whereas, we learn with deep sorrow, regret, and disappointment that the Committee on Judiciary, to whom was referred the memorial of the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly called Mormons, complaining of the grievances suffered them in the state of Missouri, have reported unfavorable to our cause, to justice, and humanity. Therefore, resolved first, that we consider the report of the Committee on Judiciary unconstitutional and subversive to the rights of a free people, and justly calls for the disapprobation of all the supporters and lovers of good government and republican principles. Resolved second, that the committee state in their report, that our memorial aggravate the case of our oppressors, and at the same time say that they have not examined into the truth or falsehoods of the facts mentioned in said memorial. Resolved third, that the memorial does not aggravate the conduct of our oppressors, as every statement set forth in said memorial was substantiated by indubitable testimony. Therefore, we consider the statement of the committee in regard to that part as false and ungenerous. Resolved fourth, that that part of the report, referring us to the justice and magnanimity of the state of Missouri for redress, we deem it a great insult to our good sense better judgment and intelligence, when from numerous affidavits which were laid before the committee, proved that we could only go into the state of Missouri contrary to the exterminating order of the governor, and consequently at the risk of our lives. Resolved fifth, that after repeated appeals to the constituted authorities of the state of Missouri for redress, which were in vain, we fondly hoped that in the Congress of the United States ample justice would have been rendered us and upon that consideration alone we pledged ourselves to abide their decision. Resolved sixth, that the exterminating order of Governor Boggs is a direct infraction of the Constitution of the United States and of the State of Missouri, and the committee in refusing to investigate the proceedings of executive and others of the State of Missouri, and turning a deaf ear to the cries of the widows, orphans, and innocent blood, we deem no less than secondary the proceedings of that mur murderous mob, whose deeds are recorded in heaven, and justly calls down upon their heads the righteous judgments of an offended God. Resolved seventh, that the thanks of this meeting be tendered to the citizens of the state of Illinois for their kind, liberal, and generous conduct towards us, and that we call upon them, as well as every patriot in this vast republic, to aid us in all lawful endeavors to obtain redress for the injuries we have sustained. Resolved eighth, that the thanks of this meeting be tendered to the delegation of Illinois for their bold, manly, noble, and independent course they have taken in presenting our case before the authorities of the nation, amid misrepresentation, contumely, and abuse, which characterized us in our suffering condition. Resolved ninth, that the thanks of this meeting be tendered to Governor Carlin of Illinois, Governor Lucas of Iowa, for their sympathy, aid, and protection, and to all other honorable gentlemen who have assisted us in our endeavors to, attain, to obtain redress. Resolved 10th, that Joseph Smith, Jr., Sidney Rigdon, and Elias Higby, the delegates appointed by this church to visit the city of Washington to present our sufferings before the authorities of the nation, accept of the thanks of this meeting for the prompt and efficient manner in which they have discharged their duty, and that they be requested in the behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints throughout the world to continue to use their endeavors to obtain redress for a suffering people, and if all hopes of obtaining satisfaction for the injuries done us be entirely blasted, that they then appeal our case to the court of heaven, believing that the great Jehovah who rules over the destiny of nations, and who notices the falling sparrow, will undoubtedly redress our wrongs, and ere long avenge us of our adversaries. 
It was then resolved that the report of the Committee on Judiciary, as well as the foregoing preamble and resolutions, be published in the Quincy Papers. Resolved that a Committee of Seven be appointed to investigate the recommendations these persons may have who wish to obtain an ordination in the ministry and to ordain such as may be thought worthy, that Elder Samuel Bent, Joseph Wood, and Orson Hyde compose said committee. Resolved that this meeting feel satisfied with the proceedings of the Presidency with regard to the sale of town property, etc., and that they be requested to continue in their agency. Resolved that this meeting adjourn for one hour. Conference met pursuant to adjournment. After singing, the President arose and read third chapter of John's Gospel, after which prayer was offered by Elder Erastus Snow. The President commenced making observations on the different subjects embraced in the chapter, particularly on the third, fourth, fifth verses, illustrating it with very beautiful and striking figure, and throwing a flood of light on the subjects which were brought up to review. He then spoke to the elders respecting their mission, and advised those who went into the world to preach the gospel, to leave their families provided for with the necessities of life, and to teach the gathering as set forth in the Holy Scriptures, that it had been wisdom to for the greater body of the church to keep on this side of the river, in order that a foundation might be established in this place, but that now it was the privilege of the saints to occupy the lands in the Iowa, or wherever the Spirit might lead them that he did not wish to have any political influence, but wished the saints to use their political franchise to the best of their knowledge. He then stated that since Elder Hyde had been appointed to visit the Jewish people, he had felt an impression that it would be well for Elder John E. Page to accompany him on his mission. It was resolved that Elder John E. Page be appointed to accompany Elder Orson Hyde on his mission, and that he have proper credentials with given him. It was then resolved that as a great part of the time of the conference had been taken up with charges against individuals which might have been settled by the different authorities of the church, that in future no such cases be brought before the conferences. The Committee on Ordination reported that they had ordained thirty-one persons to be elders in the church, who were ordained under the hands of Alpheus Gifford and Stephen Perry, which report was accepted. F. G. Williams presented himself on the stand and humbly asked forgiveness for his conduct and expressed his determination to do the will of God in future. His case was presented to the conference by President Hiram Smith, when it was unanimously resolved that F. G. Williams be forgiven and be received into the fellowship of the Church. It was reported that seventy-five persons had been baptized during the conference, and that upwards of fifty had been received to the quorum of the seventies. President Hiram Smith was called upon to dismiss the assembly. After he had made a few observations, the conference was closed under the blessing of the Presidency, until the first Friday in October next, Joseph Smith, Jr., President, Robert B. Thompson, Clerk.